the reason I think I'm rich is my perspective is I've got running water in my house. Not only that, I've got access to hot water in my house. I've got a toilet in my house. Right, I know this is like bog standard stuff for most people in this country. I think, I hold a perspective that that is amazing. Sometimes, honestly, if you lived with me, you'd see me go to the tap, run a glass of water and just go, that's unbelievable. That's flipping <laughs> ace. I've got running water in my house. <laughs> Probably a third of people in the world would give the right arm to have that, and I've got it. That, that, in my world, makes me stinking rich. Stinking rich. Yeah, just got far coffee then, mate. <laughs> yeah, you don't happen to have any masking tape at your house, do you? This is a bit of people want to watch, isn't it? <laughs> trying to find masking tape. I think, stop filming, we've got enough <laughs> footage. <laughs> 74, 74 <laughs> separate views. <laughs> Take the nose of staff away, friends and family. That means about two people. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 there's definitely one like that. Two subscribers. Two in a week, mate. How far off viral are we? Check me out, I'm going to tweet, mate, and everything. I'm rubbish at tweeting. I get to the end of the week and think, oh, I could have tweeted that. I've read about 20 tweets, and they've all been, like, within the last four hours or something. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but they must be tweeting. Like, I'm thinking, like... It's taking up too much time. Yeah, how do they even do anything? Because <laughs> everything they're doing... They're you just fit like, in, don't you? I don't know. <laughs> 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 but then also, I think because I'm, I'm like engaged with the person that I'm with, or I'm, I'm, I'm in, yeah. I'm with the people that I'm with, I'm, I'm in the moment with it. I'm not then thinking, oh, there's loads of people out there. <laughs> that I need to tweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not thinking about them. Now my head's blank. What the heck am I tweeting? Oh, that's what I'm tweeting. You can say, follow John on Twitter. He doesn't tweet a lot. <laughs> You've got to get out and coach. You've got to do the hours. You've got to put it in because that's where you really learn. It's not. It's like a. I think people think they can just do a course and then, no, some, some people think they can come and just do a course and then they're like, oh right, now I can coach, but actually it's the people who get out and do the hours, who just, just try to coach everyone and but not, not without asking, <laughs> setting up practice sessions for themselves so they can practice the coaching, they're the ones that do really well, do really well, because they're the ones who are putting the hours, it's like learning to drive, isn't it? The more hours you put in, the more natural it starts to become, doesn't it? It's the same sort of thing, I think, there's loads to be said for it. That's why I'm a little bit more experienced over qualification. Like I, I think it's good to have some qualification, but for me, definitely experience, definitely. If someone's done hours and hours and hours or something, I don't know, that depends whether it's a surgeon doing an No, but still, even if I was having heart surgery, would I want someone who said to me, this is my first one? Or would I want someone who but said- But I'm qualified, or I'm qualified. I've done this 500 times, yeah, and I've, I've, not, this, I've not been to college <laughs> once. I've done this 500 times, and I've got 500 successes. I'd be like, yeah, all right then. Hiya. Uh, well, are you doing? You all right? You all right? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Listen, Mike's filming, but don't worry about it. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm dead excited about it. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Hey John. Hi yeah. Hi yeah. So at first it's weird, isn't it? But well, then after a bit, it's just going to be normal. Like it, one of the young kids in school. Right. Um, yeah. First thing we first thing we need to tell you is Mike is at the back of the room. He's filming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mike's quite skilled with Photoshop. <laughs> Make it look amazing as well. That's the thing. <laughs> and one of the things that I'm really been thinking through and conscious of is, as a child, how many times. Do children actually get asked open, pure questions where they can go wherever they want with it? And how many times do they just get asked either rhetorical questions or very closed questions that need a specific answer? How many times have kids stood there almost in their heads thinking, what's the right answer for it? What's the right answer? I've got to get the right answer, do you know? And I actually, I don't know, but I wonder if you start to look at the lives of children whether those questions that are open and pure, where they can go where they want with it, are actually quite rare for them. Because I think there's a heck of a lot of conditions that are placed on kids and they very quickly learn how to work with them, they learn what the right answer is. And I think from their parents, from teaching staff, from 
other peers around them, they're just being asked questions that have a very specific answer. So I think it's actually quite alien to them at some times to have a question with a bit of silence that they can really genuinely work with and, it, and there's some space where there's no right or wrong with it. It's okay for them to actually start to make up their own mind with it. The best thing you can start to do is let go of getting it right or wrong. Just let go of it. What, what does success and failure look like to coach? Just chuck a few ideas around for a minute too. <laughs> I think you can look at simplicity, yeah. reflecting and trying to work with yourself to be to be better at that in whatever way you can. It's really tricky, this, isn't it? This one says was sacked from news reporter job because quote they weren't right for television. I think it's dead easy to look at people who appear successful and imagine in our heads that they've swanned their way there, that they were just brilliant, naturally brilliant at this stuff early on, and they just rolled it themselves into that place without any failure. And I actually think success is littered with failure. It's like failure to failure to failure to failure. And I think the difference is that people who end up in a successful place, end up good at what they do, is because failure doesn't stop them. <laughs> they fail and they crack on again, and they fail and they crack on again. But I think any successful person's life is actually littered with failure after failure after failure. So we're just gonna show you these, so you'll you know some of them. Yeah, 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 she was, yeah, early on, sacked from a news reporter job because he said she, want, she didn't have a face for television, she won't write for it. Again, I love that. Imagine that, some, just some last called Oprah, not famous at all, goes home, says I've been sacked, he said I'm not right for television. I'm dead interested in this, and how does she then end up with one of the most successful TV shows in the history? Without checking out the purpose of him going to uni and do a law degree, what he's on is, he's on a path of living out someone else's purpose for him, not his. He's living out someone else's goal. And if I'd have just done progress coaching with him, he'd be at uni doing a law degree. Probably miserable. Maybe not miserable, maybe making the best of it, but maybe not being the quite right thing for him. Which one? Either of them, I think, yes. yeah. I mean, I can, I can do five o'clock, right? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm alright. Okay, that. Yeah. me and Becky can. Uh, what people think they should do, or what other people maybe want from, or the pressures on them, or da 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 da. So, in some ways, it can be a perspective question because you're almost bringing them back to their deep down inner perspective. What do you and, really and that's want? Why we it's weird, this, isn't it? Because it's similar to have you had your hair cut? And have you had your hair cut? Do you know? <laughs> it's exactly the same words, but it, it's a really different question. Because it's too easy, I think, for us to now get hung up on the side winning his next fight, or that's not the thing. That's not the thing. That's just how it's manifest itself. The thing is the self sabotage in the build up of the process. I think that's what I'd be checking in with him. And I think transformation leads to change. Transformation leads to long lasting change. Change without transformation is just a short term fix. If you're really transformed in your thinking and transformed in your attitudes and transformed in the way you see yourself and your perspectives and your purpose for it, you'll have long lasting results. Mm. I remember before having children telling people I was really busy. <laughs> 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 it's completely measured against. But at the time, that was the busiest I'd ever been, so I was really, re and I genuinely was really busy. Then I had kids and found a different level of busyness. <laughs> But then even now, I'll tell people I'm really busy, but I'm not as busy as I was a few years ago when my kids were dead little, do you know? So, but it's all, it's all relative, isn't it? It's all relative for us. Oh, yeah, you've got your cylinders. All right, so... You're the only person in the world. You're the only second person ever, ever, in all the time I've done this exercise, which is actually hundreds of people, quality. I'm just fascinated in that idea of who gets to decide whether you get to stand in that, who judges mm -hmm. it. Who says whether Helen's a good dancer or not? Who says? <laughs> <laughs> do, you see, do you see where I'm going with it? I just like that idea of thinking about who gets to decide whether you're clever, whether you're attractive, whether you're fun, whether you're boring, whether, who, who's telling you that and where's your information coming from? I just find it a dead fascinating thought. I genuinely think you can check, you can almost change your life by changing the way you look at it, by changing your perspectives and stuff. I'm going to give you an example. You don't have to answer this out loud, but I just like 
to just chuck this in as a perspective, if I was to ask you the question, are you rich? Now, I, this, I'll, share, I'll share my take on this. I think I am stinking rich. Stinking rich. And I don't think that because I'm a millionaire. And I don't <coughs> think that because I've got some sort of massive property portfolio. Or I, I've got none of that going on at all. And I'm all right. Do you know, as in, I earn, I earn an okay wage. And I've got enough to kind of get by on. But I'm certainly not up there in the millionaire status by any stretch of imagination. The reason I think I'm rich is, my perspective is I've got running water in my house. Not only that, I've got access to hot water in my house. I've got a toilet in my house. Right, I know this is like bog standard stuff for most people in this country. I, th I hold a perspective that that is amazing. Sometimes, honestly, if you lived with me, you'd see me go to the tap, run a glass of water and just go, that's unbelievable, that's a flipping <laughs> ace. I've got running water in my house. <laughs> Probably a third of people in the world would give the right arm to have that, and I've got it. That, that, in my world, makes me stinking rich. Stinking rich. I just think it's eggs. I've got a flipping car, my own car. My own car. That I get to drive around in every day. That's unbelievable, isn't it? From <coughs> my perspective. I just think it's <coughs> This really shifts the way I think about money, the way I think about my life, how content I feel, the fulfillment that I experience. Not because anything's changed for me financially, it's just to do with the way that I look at it and the way I think about it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I've looked at it twice. Did Pete email you about doing something? Just do it like that. Mm -hmm. Mark's going to be the most helpful person ever. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do anything for you. Right. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> oh, not a problem. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're Can you just call that out the bag please? Is that okay? <laughs> that might not make the final thought I just done that. I hope that's literally falling asleep. <laughs> just, that's me, that's naturally me, that's that. It's I'm a helpful kind of helpful. guy. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll all be around here. No problem, no problem. I know what to do, guys. Disgraceful, get out. <laughs> so, so almost creating a picture of something gives it more richness and depth. It helps. It's, this is linked to perspective culture. We get to see it from a different place and a different angle and in a different way. The reason for chucking this all up there is not that I'm expecting you to know all this all the time, blah blah. blah. It's just to show you that, like. If we'd have written this up on day one, you'd have all gone, don't know what you're talking about. And yet we're writing this stuff up and you're sitting there going, yeah, yeah, I know this stuff, I know it. Do you know, like, I'm not saying you know it inside out or anything like that, but you know it. And all, you're holding all this, all of this, as you go into a coaching session. So as a coach, you're walking in with all this stuff somewhere stored away in your brain. This is what makes coaching so skillful and so intricate and so amazing and so brilliant and so diverse and so never-ending actually that I'm, I'm not sure when I'll ever get to the stage where I go like, that's me, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can do this coaching stuff because actually it's just an ongoing thing all the time it's a process of just improvement because there's so much to learn, so much to do with it but I just want to show you that and I hope you feel proud of yourselves for knowing that stuff because that's a heck of a lot of learning and I always, when I got seen, there's always this PA in that about so. And that's why we're starting to do these courses like the coaching parent, the coaching leader, the coaching whatever, because we almost want to make that a little bit more overt to people that coaching is an approach to parenting, it's an approach to leadership, it's an approach to whatever else we choose to do with it. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I love, and I love that bit about it, I love formal coaching as well, but I just love that life stuff as well, the bits that it just... Just rave about us on social media, whatever you want to do, communicate with that, just be amazing, it'd be, it'd be fantastic for us and really help us. Okay. Uh, and our YouTube channel's got, got two vids on at the minute, which are just me talking, so they're not amazing. But um, the, our YouTube channel's going to be amazing, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, once Mike gets hold of it and gets it going, so there'll be some good stuff on there for you to watch and look at and see. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, yeah. See you later. Take care. And what makes 
fluent style of training different than other kind of training that you've been on before? It's just, the word I would say is just human, real, relaxed, we can, not afraid to talk around failures and I think that with the confidence um, in being able to go out and like practice coaching and stuff, that's, that's really the main thing for me. I think very cool. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. That's cool. really good. I love it. You're a natural. Well, I've been seeing a few years of practice. That was easy. Thanks. I really appreciate it. See you, Julie. So, are you coming out wondering where I was? Um. And how have you found Fluent to be as an organisation? Brilliant. Um, it's not the first coaching stuff that I've done, um, but it's certainly had the most impact for me. Um, I think the fact that it's based around you personally, being authentic, being individual, um, and that there's no kind of right or wrong, there's no judgement with it.